When we enter the greenhouse, we first enter the vestibule. The vestibule opens with one button. Press the button, it opens. Press the button, it closes. Let's go into the greenhouse and I'll tell you how the system works. Here I put a leaf and here you can see how it flies out. It goes down and works with such whirls. And it costs quite a bit of money. We have a boiler that performs the function of air heating. Constant air movement which is very necessary for plants. We heat it here and the heat goes up. It has to heat the air plus 100 degrees. We end up with a high efficiency effect, about 93%. Here's our LED lighting, about 1.2 kilowatts. All around you can open these vents. Good afternoon, dear friends. Today I wanted to tell you about another one of our designs. So it is a greenhouse with a width of 10 meters and a length of 20 meters. plus the vestibule group and separately the boiler room, which is built into the greenhouse. And so, when we go into the greenhouse, we go into the vestibule first. So that we don't get into the greenhouse right away, there is a vestibule group. First of all, we don't run the cold into the greenhouse and second of all, we can store tools and equipment here. This is also where the control panel for the greenhouse is. Then there is the seed room or boiler room. In this case we made a boiler room. To make it convenient to wheelbarrow in, there is a white door. Then we get to the boiler room. I'll tell you about the boiler later. Automatic fan light openers are standard here. We just press the button and the fan light opens. One, two. No need to manually twist open, then close it back. It is, as they say, the 21st century and you can control the button. If you put automatics, the shutters will open at the desired temperature. But this is not always a good thing. Because if the automatic device opens the window, a stream of cold air will come straight away. And even worse, the window might break. Therefore, it is better to use manual mode. You open it in the morning and close it in the evening. By the way, it opens to any position. That is how we complete our greenhouses with such systems. Next, we go inside. One of the main elements that we make is such interesting symbiosis when we combine film and polycarbonate. Firstly, it is very functional and secondly, it is quite effective. And so we continue about ventilation. Here, as we can see, the greenhouse is immersed in the ground for a meter, even a little more. Therefore, the vertical part is not large and just in here we set the window pane. Here, the transoms can be opened all around the perimeter. What effect does this have? In summer, the greenhouse is very well ventilated. Firstly, it is partially immersed and does not overheat as much. Secondly, there is no drought. The air goes into the greenhouse and doesn't cling to the plants, but immediately pushes the hot air out into the transoms that are above, so the plants that are downstairs don't suffer a draft. This is how to close the shutters for the winter. And it can be done from the outside. 
They work on gas shock absorbers. One is completely open. Here are the main elements that allow this greenhouse normally ventilated in the summer. The upper transoms and side vents. In comes the air from the sides and pushes the hot air up. Next, what happens in winter? In winter, we have all transoms closed and the boiler acts as an air heater. That is, the air is heated and distributed from top to bottom throughout the greenhouse by the air ducts. Many people ask questions. Is it better to heat air or water heating? Water heating, of course, has its advantages, but in this case we are discussing air heating and the greenhouse, which is built on this system. What are advantages of air heating? First, the boiler. When it works, it heats the air and then distributes it through the ducts to the greenhouse. This is the main task – to redistribute. As a result, we get a high efficiency of about 93%, because we immediately warm air, not water, which goes through the pipes, and in addition, there are heat exchangers, which also have losses up to 10%. That is, when we heat water, we have more losses compared to heating air, since air we heat it and immediately distribute it, and air is easier to work with. It doesn't have to be highly airtight. What is the problem with the water heating? For example, there is a branching in the greenhouse water and radiators. And if there is a leak somewhere, it is good when there is a natural makeup, because the boiler is usually connected directly to the water. Cold water goes into the boiler, heats up and goes back into the system. And those losses due to the gap we recover, but the capacity drops. When the leakage is big, the system can lose all the water and then the boiler will run without water and as a consequence will fail. As an engine that runs without cooling, eventually will overheat very quickly. It is the same with water boilers. This is the first thing that happens. The second is that with heating, we create ventilation in the winter. Air comes in and goes through the greenhouse. That is, there is a constant movement of air. And as a rule with air heating, the air has to go through the boiler five times. Constant air circulation is necessary for the plants. There is no local movement of air. There is a general flow, which is very good. The third factor of air heating, let's take water heating again, for example. If the system runs on water, and as we know, it is most often ferrous or saturated with salts, it contributes to the formation of scale inside the boiler. As a result, boilers need periodic maintenance. Once a year, it is advisable to flush and clean with acid. The air system has no such problems, as air does not deposit a layer of dirt and dust on the walls of the ducts. Because of this, the air system is more durable. Another important factor is the cost of the systems. Air heating is much cheaper than water heating. Also, the boiler with a redistribution system is cheaper. Fourthly, this system is not afraid of thawing and freezing. For example, if the greenhouse is not working, we can mothball it. At the same time, there is no need to drain the water, no need to fill it with antifreeze, we just close it and seal it up. This often happens when, for example, it is necessary to destroy the white fly that got infested. To do this, usually everything is opened so that the pest freezes. And so, if we have water heating, it is recommended to drain all the water to keep it from freezing. With air heating is easier, we turned it off, it stopped working. Frost or no frost, we turned it back on and it started working again. The fifth factor is our development. We can take the air for the boiler from the upper part of the greenhouse, where the heat usually accumulates. The principle is, we have heated the bottom and the heat begins to rise up. There we put a pipe on top and the air we would have lost, we take back into the greenhouse and use it. Even without a boiler, it can be accumulated and we have minimal heat loss. 
efficient use of the heat that we put into the greenhouse. It rises, we collect it and run it back into the boiler. Here there is no such system, but in principle the pipe, which sucks in the air enough to bring upstairs, and it will back the hot air back into the boiler. We get the following. The boiler hits the air to the temperature that comes out. That is, for the boiler to fully give it 60 kW with airflow, about 2000 cubic meters as in this case. The capacity of the fans here is 2000 cubic meters per hour. Then the boiler must heat the air plus 100 degrees. If air comes in at plus 20 degrees, then at 100 degrees and have plus 120 degrees at the output. So if comes plus 30 heated air, which we take, we save 10%. Because you don't have to heat plus 100 degrees. We have to heat plus 90 degrees. Due to the fact that we take the hot air that is at the top, we lower it and drive it into the boiler. We have to give less heat to heat the whole system. Through this we can save in the winter 10, 15, 20%. Naturally, air has disadvantages. Yes, plus it heats up quickly. Here, this greenhouse, when it was plus 5 degrees, heated up literally in half an hour to 20 degrees. The system is inherent fast speed of heating. But the other side of the coin is if for some reason the boiler stops working, the temperature in the greenhouse will also quickly fall as it was gained. But for that we have a more advanced heating system that includes accumulation and ground heating. With the help of air, the ground is heated. About this we will tell in the next issue. So subscribe to our channel, go to our website teplitsa.kiev.ua. There it all is. We strive to develop more effective systems for greenhouses to reduce the cost of growing and, of course, to increase profitability in order to develop the greenhouse business. Therefore, our main objective is to make the greenhouse so that it is economical, efficient and long-lasting. That is our goal. It will lead to the fact that next year another greenhouse will be ordered from us. What else can be said about air heating compared to water heating? Yes, the water heating system is more efficient than the air heating system because it picks up heat much better than air. Yes, it takes longer to heat up, which can be taken as a disadvantage. But it also takes longer to cool down. In general, the challenge is this. When the sun goes down, we need to dramatically increase the temperature in the greenhouse. To do this, we run fans that heat the system, which in turn gives off heat more efficiently. With air heating you can change the temperature in the greenhouse more dynamically. That is, turned on, the heat output of the boiler has increased. Increased the rate of intake of warm air gave more heat to the greenhouse. The sun came out, turned off the additional air intake, and the temperature in the boiler dropped. That is, the heat output decreased. The plus side of the air heating is that it is dynamic. And the minus, the greenhouse can cool down faster. Heat capacity of water and air. If you translate into kilograms, the heat capacity of water is only four times greater than that of air. That is, air, despite the fact that it is four times less heat per kilogram, it is easier to drive it through a certain volume, due to the fact that it is easier to work with gas fans. Yes, it's four times less heat absorbing, but by blowing more heavily on the boiler, we can take the same amount of heat and transfer it and distribute it. That's the system we have. We are going to run it now. For now without heating, because it's warm outside. The greenhouse will start a little later. Now we will start to the boiler and the ventilation system. We'll tell you how it's regulated. And so we turn on the fan. It's going to hum a little bit, but it can't be helped. The fan takes the air out of the greenhouse. There is a plug here. When the boiler gets hot, so we don't lose that air, we can get some extra air in here. 
it gets sucked in pretty good. Let's go into the greenhouse and I'll tell you how the system works. By adjusting the plugs we can change the flows. We can direct all the air to the end. If you look at the draft here, Even if some debris gets into the system, it's all blown out. Here I'm putting a leaf, and here it comes out. All the hot air can be moved here as much as possible. But it's best to distribute it around the greenhouse. Open all the plugs. You can regulate the flow with them. Up, down. Up, down. Basically, it's directed in such a way that it's get a little bit hot and goes down, and works with such whirls. Here's our system. It's pretty simple and affordable. This greenhouse is completely ready for winter. Not expensive. Every farmer can afford. Greenhouse under the film is a standard design. The boiler room is an expensive. Lighting system. We will now move on to it. Well and drip irrigation system. All this together allows you to get a crop in this greenhouse. We turn off the fan. And so here is our LED lighting. Layout provides for six trays. This is how they will be. And these LEDs are at a height of 1.5 meters from the tray. Due to the fact that they are on chains, they can be easily adjusted. As the plants go higher and higher, we erase the LEDs. For salads and greens this is quite handy. Especially the trays will be elevated. These are special 50 watt LEDs. The spectrum is blue and red, inexpensive solution. It is possible to lower and start the greenhouse earlier. But the distance of 1.5 meters allows you to get a spot of light. Just cannot see now because the day, but in general, one spot from the lamp overlaps the other. That's the distance of 1.5 meters is enough to cover the entire area with light. Each tray can be turned on off separately. Lighting is set to work at a certain time, with the help of automatics. Now we have turned it on in a manual mode to demonstrate the total power of the LEDs. They are 42 lights, 7 per row. They are 2.2 kilowatts in total. For salads and greens this is enough. But it will not be enough to grow light loving plants, tomatoes and cucumbers. It has to be increased by a factor of at least 3. So in this version it's efficient for salad and foliage. We do not light everywhere, we light locally. Next the plan is to do the first racks. These will be the trays and later the higher ones will be the racks. Already the lights will have to be adjusted in height. The main thing you need for a greenhouse. A strong good frame as here. Translucent cover. Here a combination of film and polycarbonate complement each other. The third is heating to work in the winter. The fourth is the lighting. Fifth is ventilation, transoms, shutters and combined air heating, which also mixes the air. And irrigation, which will be installed after the trays. So here are the basic functionalities that are needed to work in the winter. It is very well that the greenhouse is immersed in 1.5 meters and stands on blocks. This will reduce heat loss here in such a configuration. So if you want a functional greenhouse, then go to our website. So what we can offer? If you want to grow green products, then we will help you with that. Alexander was with you, the company Ecotech, live in harmony with nature and in rhythm with progress.